Hello everybody and welcome back to the second shelf. It's the end of March and that means it's time for the April TBR. And in case you are new to the channel, TBR for the purpose of this video, which I film at the end of each month, means to be released. So I look at the new releases of the next month, in this case April, and I pick a couple, four, five, sometimes six, that I personally uh, found interesting and I share them with you. And as always, we start off with literary fiction, and this time I picked a debut. You know, I'm always looking for new writers, new voices, and this debut is called Walking on the Ceiling by Asegul Savas, and will be published at the end of the month on the 30th of April. Asegul Savas is a Turkish writer who lives in Paris. She grew up in Copenhagen and London, and obviously she writes in English because the book is not translated, it's her original writing. Um, walking on the ceiling follows a young woman, Nunu, Nunu, not sure about the pronunciation, sorry about that, um, who grew up in Istanbul and after the death of her mother uh, moves to Paris um, uh, and there she meets a British writer, that she, an older writer that she admired a lot uh, and they start a friendship and because this writer is working on a book about Istanbul, Nunu starts to tell uh, her friend uh, about her past, about Istanbul, about her family, about her mother um, and the uh, it's a coming of age story if I remember, if I interpret it correctly, uh, told um, uh, through this, these conversations and letters between the young woman and her older friend. Um, I thought the, the setup sounded interested. I'm interesting. I'm always interested in, you know, um, new voices. I said that not only debuts, but also different voices, not, you know, white female voices. Um, and this idea of a young woman, Istanbul fascinates me as a city, so I thought this one sounded very interesting and that's why it made my TBR April list. My second pick, we stay with literary fiction, but we move to short story collection, and that is Let's Tell the Story Properly by Jennifer Nansubuga Makumbi. Um, Makumbi is a uh, Ugandan writer um, and I read her previous book, a novel 2013 I think published Kintu and I really liked it. Uh, incidentally we read this book a couple of months ago in the Read Around the World book club that Mel is running uh, on Goodreads. Um, so anyway I liked <laughs> Kintu um, and I'm interested in uh, Makumbi's work. So this short story collection sounded fascinating. It's centering around Ugandan immigrants in Britain. That's basically all I know, um, but it, it, it looks like uh, 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 Mukambi discusses uh, not only immigration life, but the traveling and, and arriving and what it means, um, you know, to cross distances. Um, it sounded fascinating. Uh, I'm not a big short story reader, as you might know, but I want to delve more into short story collections. And this one, uh, this new release, by the way, also on the 30th of April, uh, sounded like a perfect uh, choice to read more short stories. And from literary fiction, we move on to crime. Uh, you know, I love crime novels, and for April I picked two. Uh, the first one is Alice Feeney, I Know Who You Are, which will be published uh, on the 23rd of April, I think in the UK first, and then in May um, in the US. Alice Feeney is a British writer, she worked as a BBC journalist, and I know her because I really, really enjoyed her debut thriller, uh, Sometimes I Lie, which I read I think last year or the end of 2017, and I thought it was a brilliant thriller. So I'm eager to pick up her next one. Uh, I know who you are. Um, uh, we have a main character, an um, almost famous actress on the verge of breakthrough, Amy Sinclair, um, who had a big row with her husband, and the next uh, morning she finds her husband's wallet, a uh, wallet and keys on on the dining room table. Her husband is nowhere to be found. She believes he's probably left after the row. She goes for a run. Uh, and then tries to pay something with her card. A card is rejected, 
and there is a has been a, a large withdrawal, something like ten thousand pounds or something. She suspects her husband, but is then told at the bank, no, she herself did the withdrawal. So we enter a, a rabbit hole, as the blurb says, where nothing is the way it seems. There's also interjected with that. I have no idea how the story of a little girl uh, who wanders away from home um, and stuff happens to her. It sounds all very intriguing, but my main reason for picking this one is, like I said, the fact that I thought uh, Alice Feeney's first book, Sometimes I Lie, if you haven't read it, you should check it out, was really wonderful. So I'm looking forward to the next one. And my second pick uh, for crime is a debut uh, crime novel. I talked about it already because I read it. Uh, um, I had a, received a copy from uh, via NetGalley and I just loved it, but it hadn't been released, so I'm, I'm including it. Maybe I should start with telling you which book. Angie Kim, Miracle Creek. Um, uh, I read it, I loved it, but it only comes out now. Angie Kim was born in Korea, but she moved uh, to Baltimore, uh, so she lives in the States, she writes in English, and Miracle Creek is um, set in Virginia, uh, in a small town called Miracle Creek, and we have our central characters, um, a Korean immigrant family, Young and Park Yo, and their daughter, and Young and Park, they run... Um, uh, a sort of, yeah, not a clinic, but a facility where they have this oxy oxygen chamber submarine, and that's used for medical purposes, especially to treat children uh, with um, autism uh, or uh, mostly autism. Let's stick with that. And the novel opens when the submarine explodes and two people are killed, uh, a young boy who has severe autism and his single mother is then charged with the murder, with setting the explosion. The book is set up uh, partly as a courtroom drama when the trial of the young woman starts, but also in flashbacks we see various characters and we really don't know who did it, whether the single mother uh, in fact uh, set off the explosion, whether it was an accident. There are also uh, people who are uh, protesters, who are uh, protesting against the treatment of, of these children with the oxygen chambers, or maybe they set off um, the explosion. It's very suspenseful, it's well written, well paced, and like I said, there are clues, and in the end you think, oh yes, of course, but it's really well done, and I at least um, uh, w it, it didn't occur to me halfway through that I already knew um, what really happened. So I think it's a very successful debut uh, thriller that you should absolutely check out. I forgot to mention um, Miracle Creek will be published mid-month on the 16th. Another book published on the 16th is my last pick and it's of course sci-fi because what would be a TBR for April without a sci-fi novel? And that is Emma Newman, Atlas Alone, the fourth book in her Planet Fall series. Emma New Newman is a um, British author who writes urban fantasy but also sci-fi and I loved her Planet Fall series. Uh, the first three books, um, uh, it's, it's a series about going to another planet and what happens there. It's not a series uh, in, in the sense of consecutive um, uh, uh, consecutive plot, so you can read um, the books, you don't have to read them in order. And I have to say, uh, the third one, Before Mars, I didn't think was that good. The first two I thought were wonderful, the third one not so much, but I'm still enthralled um, in this whole planet fall universe, so I want to check out the new one, uh, which, um, like I said, will come out mid-April. And this one centers around a young woman, a gamer called Dee. Um, six months after she left Earth and there was a nuclear strike on Earth, destroying almost all the world and killing millions. And then Dee starts to investigate. I thought the gamer thing, something new, that sounded interesting. But like I said, I really love Emma Newman's uh, Planetfall series, except for the third one. So I had to include uh, the fourth in the series in this video. 
So those were my five picks uh, for new books to be released in April. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed it. Let me know down in the comments whether any of the books that I mentioned interest you or whether you have a book in April or books in April coming out in April that you are looking forward to, that you are excited about. I always uh, want to hear that and I'll see you all soon in the next one. Bye-bye.